Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's talk about orthocenters. To understand orthocenters a little better, let's take a look at this practice problem that you see on the screen. We're going to find the orthocenter of a triangle with the vertices at each of the following coordinates of 0, 0, 6, 3, and 8, 9. To help keep things clear and consistent, I'm going to label each of these points A, B, and C. Then on the coordinate plane, I'm going to plot these three points and connect them to make a triangle. Because points A, B, and C form an obtuse triangle, we know that the orthocenter is going to be located outside of the triangle. If we had an acute triangle, or all three angles are less than 90 degrees, then the orthocenter is located inside the triangle, and if we had a right triangle with a right angle, that means that the orthocenter will be located on the actual triangle. Now that we can visualize this a little bit more clearly, let's go a little bit further. To find the orthocenter, we need to find out where the three altitudes of this triangle meet. Because altitudes are perpendicular to each of the side lengths, we need to find out the slope of each of the side lengths so that we can use the opposite reciprocal slope for each of the altitudes. Because A is located at 0, 0, I'm going to start with segment AB. To find the slope of segment AB, let's go ahead and find the ratio of the vertical change to horizontal change between these two points. Our vertical change is positive 3 units, and our horizontal change is positive 6 units. So we know the slope of segment AB is equal to 1 to 2, or 1 half. So we now have the slope of one side of the triangle, we just need the slope of one other side. Again, let's take advantage of the fact that point A is located at 0, 0, and let's find the slope of segment AC. From point A to point C, the vertical change is going to be positive 9 units, and the horizontal change is going to be positive 8 units. So we know the slope of segment AC is going to be 9 to 8. So at this point, we know the slope of segment AB is 1 half, and the slope of segment AC is equal to 9 eighths. If the slope of segment AB is equal to 1 half, then the slope of its altitude, which is perpendicular to it, is going to have the opposite reciprocal slope of negative 2. And as for the altitude of segment AC, which is perpendicular to it, the opposite reciprocal of 9 eighths is going to be equal to negative 8 ninths. These two slopes of negative 2 and negative 8 ninths are going to be the slopes of the altitudes from these two segments. So visualizing altitudes, especially for obtuse triangles, can be a little bit tricky, so let me see if I can help you make that a little bit more clear. Let me go ahead and extend segment AB for a moment, and let's draw this dashed line that's perpendicular to segment AB but goes through point C. This dotted line that goes through point C but has the opposite reciprocal as segment AB is called the altitude. While the altitude is just a line segment that's a part of this dashed line, this dashed line does show where it's located. We had just found out that the slope of this line would be negative 2. Let's go ahead and determine the equation for this line. This particular line is perpendicular to segment AB and goes through the point C of 8, 9. Because we have a point and a slope, we can go ahead and use point-slope form. Substituting in, we can write y minus 9 is equal to negative 2 times the quantity of x minus 8, and distributing this negative 2, we can write y minus 9 is equal to negative 2x plus 16. And finally, adding 9 to both sides of this equation, we can write that y is equal to negative 2x plus 25. If this altitude went on forever, this would be the equation for this line. Since the location of the orthocenter is just going to be where all these altitudes meet, let's go ahead and find out another equation for another altitude. If segment AC was the base of this triangle, then this perpendicular line that's going through point B is going to represent its altitude. This line here is perpendicular to segment AC and goes through point B. Let's go ahead and find the equation of this line now. Once again, we have a point and a slope, so we can use point-slope form and use the same process as we did earlier. Substituting in, we get y minus 3 is equal to negative 8 ninths times the quantity of x minus 6, and then going ahead and distributing that negative 8 ninths, we get y minus 3 is equal to negative 8 ninths x plus 16 over 3. And finally, adding 3 to both sides, or 9 thirds, we're going to get y is equal to negative 8 ninths x plus 25 thirds. This is the equation of that perpendicular line to segment AC that goes through point B. At this point, you may be wondering if we have to go ahead and do this a third time to find a perpendicular line to segment BC that goes through point A. The reason why we don't have to find the altitude to segment BC is because that if we find the intersection between these two altitudes, that third altitude is going to go through the same intersection as well. To find out where these two altitude equations meet, we can set up a system of linear equations. 
By solving this linear system, we can find out the x and y coordinates for the orthocenter. Looking on this graph, if we extend each of these lines just a little bit further, we can actually see where they do intersect. However, since we don't know the exact coordinates of it, let's go ahead and do a little bit of algebra to figure that out. Because both of these linear equations have y isolated to the left and the rest of the terms to the right, we can go ahead and use substitution to solve this system. We can write negative 2x plus 25 is equal to negative 8 ninths x plus 25 thirds. To get rid of the fractions, we can go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD of 9, so we'll get negative 18x plus 225 is equal to negative 8x plus 75. By adding 18x to both sides of the equation, we're going to get 225 is equal to 10x plus 75, and then by subtracting 75 from both sides, we can get 150 is equal to 10x. And finally, dividing both sides by 10, we get x is equal to 15. At this point, we know that the x-coordinate for the orthocenter is going to be positive 15. Now, to find out the y-coordinate of the orthocenter, let's go ahead and plug in this 15 into one of these two equations, but the top one seems a little bit easier. Plugging in 15 for x, we're going to get y is equal to negative 2 times 15 plus 25, and then we're going to get y is equal to negative 30 plus 25, so y is equal to negative 5. It turns out that the orthocenter is located at 15 comma negative 5 in quadrant 4. And so while we already know where the orthocenter is, let me just go ahead and show you for good measure where that last altitude would be and why it also intersects at this location. Here's that third segment we didn't use of segment BC. And if we draw a perpendicular line to BC that goes through point A, we're going to see that it also goes through this point of 15 comma negative 5, aka the orthocenter. Each of these three dashed lines are perpendicular to one of the sides of the triangle and goes through the other point of the triangle. It's important to remember that whenever you're finding the orthocenter for an obtuse triangle like this one, it's going to be located outside of the triangle. Hopefully, you found that this video simplified down the process for finding out the location of an orthocenter when given three vertices of a triangle. If so, please consider giving this video a thumbs up to help support the channel, and as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.